Hey, Steve Zick here. Welcome back to Pokes Your Channel on YouTube or Reverb.com and the Guitar Ladder System. Hey, this is something I recently picked up. Um, boy, Arch Tops is really... <clears throat> I know a lot about guitars, but Arch Tops is my field of expertise because I've been dealing in them for so long. And I've sold a ton of them, and I really know Arch Tops. And uh, boy, this one's special. It's a 1965 Guild X50. Um, but it just has, it, it just rings out with the most beautiful reverb, the most beautiful mid-range. And, uh, it, you know, I've sold lots of Gibson L5s, Super 400s, L7s, L50s. I even had a Stromberg. I've sold the Angelico guitars. I've had a lot of arch tops go through my hands because I actively have been seeking them out the last 30 years. But uh, this one really has something special, and it's not, that's not sales fluff. That's the most beautiful uh, mid-range and the reverb. This is unplugged. I'm not going to be doing a, a real involved demo here. Hear that reverb? And I'm just using an $80 Zoom Q3, or, or yeah, I think it's called a Q3. Super small, cheap mics, you know, nothing sophisticated here. But I just want you to hear. But if you, you can hear that ring, this is this is really a nice guitar. This one's really hard for me to let go of. I, I would just love stuff like this. This and it sounds beautiful plugged too. This is the kind of this is the kind of guitar you're gonna want to play it unplugged just as much because it just sounds the the way it rings out and the reverb and the mid range, you know. Uh, it's not all about volume, but actually this does get quite a bit of good volume, but the, but the mid range and the mids is just so uh, naturally organic, like a wooden bell, like a reverb, it's just really beautiful. <laughs> This is 65, it's obviously got some dings and things on it. It's got a little bit of wear in the back of the neck here, but I'll tell you, this guitar reminds me a lot of a really good, like more like a 50s Gibson or something, like a really good one. It just rings out with such a beautiful tone. And uh, I, the reason I put acoustic strings on it, because when I got the guitar, it had acoustic strings on it, but it had those kind of coated ones. I'm not too into those. And when I put the regular strings on this, this thing just came, it already sounded good, but it really came alive, you know? But 
these are still stretching out a little bit. But yeah, this really has a sound. This is really going to be a hard one for me to let go of. It's got to go to got to you know do a really good home. But yeah, really has a tone, man. You can hear it like when you, you play a, a single note line and it just, it starts, kind of reminds me of a really good Epiphone arch top, like one of the master built ones, made, not, not the newer ones, that, that's a piece of junk, but the older ones are really great. Because there was a lot of European luthiers around New York at the time that were from Europe that had backgrounds making cellos, upright basses, violins, so they understood the the physics and the musicality of archtop design. So some of those old epiphones, you know, even the Triumph, the Triumph Regents, the Deluxe, the Emperor were re amazing guitars, some of the best ever made. But this kind of has that quality when you play a lick, it, it kind of starts to bloom, you know. This, this is this is a lot of guitar. I, just, I, I love things like this. This is really tough to sell, and that's not that's not some sales fluff. I just love stuff like this, and it sounds beautiful plug too. But it sounds so good acoustically, which is the acid test of a great guitar. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's got some wear in the back of the neck there, which is obvious. But yeah, my my intuition and my knowledge of selling a lot of archtop guitars for thirty years, I I personally believe this wood is older. MC 65, 75, 85, 95. I mean, it's. I think it's a lot older than 50 years. It might even be 55, 60 years old wood, you know? But um, yeah, it really has a sound. As you can hear, figure out whether I can let it go or not. If it goes to somebody cool, I'll feel better. And then I'm not just saying that. The body looks wider than it is. I, 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 it's, I, think I measured it, and it's, I think it's a little bit more than 16, but it's not 17 inches wide, but maybe just the way the structure is. But the, I love the way that aged, that aged, uh, you know, kind of cherry burst look, you know. And like I said, this, this is really a nice guitar. It plays really nice. Obviously does not have the pick guard. I don't have it. You could find one if you're really worried about it. But just get a reproduction made.
this guitar. I'm not kidding, really gonna be hard to let go of. So I mean, it's gotta go to somebody cool or I'm just gonna keep it. But yeah, I, I love this guitar. There's nothing, and, and the interesting thing, even though this is a, a laminate guitar, it's got, it's got a sound as good as any L7 or L5 I've ever owned because laminate wood is not the end all of guitar design. A lot of people don't understand that. Like a lot of European luthiers that make a lot of really high end musical instruments, including basses and cellos and violins and guitars, all kinds of stuff, use only laminate. There's a certain transparent reverb, uh, kind of blooming, flowering tone that a uh, high quality laminate that, that's especially older wood that has less, you know, less pollutants in it uh, really produces. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, there's a lot more to guitar than, than people realize. Anyway, X50 Guild 1965. Email me if you're interested, if I can let it go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, I'm not playing games. I, I really love this guitar. I really do. Uh, SteveZook7 at Yahoo.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-Z-O-O-K. The number seven not spelled out at Yahoo.com. All right. Take care.